Okay, so we are, yes, beginning the new parrot, Cheska So the, um, right, what's the most important thing we need to understand about Cheska Sabatim? The most important thing we need to understand is, um, well, there are lots of things. <laughs> One of the things that we need to begin, begin with is understanding that what we're talking about here, there are two types of, um, of chazoka. There are two types of chazoka. Um, and, um, the, well, the, 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 it, it, for our purposes. There's a cheskas karkos, uh, and there's also a cheskas metaslim. The truth is the chazok of karkos also divides into two different groups. The chazok of the land also divides into two different categories, right? But let's, make, let's understand, first of all, um, the difference between land and movable items, metaslim. What's the difference, okay? Very, very simple question. If I have in my house, a pen, and you turn around to me and you say, that pen is mine. You stole my fountain pen. What's that, Lacha? Yeah. yeah. If I turn up, knock on your door and say, excuse me, that fountain pen is mine, and you stole it, right? What do you mean? Go away, right? There's no, like, you know, length of time, possession. If it's in my possession, it's Tachas Yodi, right? It's assumed to be mine. There's an assumption of ownership, right? And the reason for this is because, as the Gemara says, there's a Gemara in Shua stuff from involvement base. The Gemara says, Achzuki inshi began We are a positive, we have a positive approach to life. We do not assume people are going it, right? Our basic starting point, we're looking at another, another, another person, right? Is an Arganov. So you assume, yeah, that what you have in your possession wasn't, didn't come to you by a theft, but you actually own it, right? That's the assumption. It's a Chazaka. A different type of chazaka. Chazaka as an assumption, right? That's how it works with metal today. So therefore, the question is, why is it, why do we say the same thing with land? This whole peric, or most of the peric, is going to be talking about how you establish ownership over land, right? When there's a question, when people, come, someone comes along and says, that piece of land that you've been growing your crops in, you stole it from me, okay? And there's a whole process, three years, you know, this is the way. But it's a basic question. Why is it that we don't have that same assumption. I'm in the land, it's mine. Why should we think it's anyone else's? Why should you assume you're going, well, you know, well, who says anyone can say anything at all? The point is, says, um, says the, um, says Blade um, Gurevich in his Arzu de Beira, as follows, that people think, people think that the perspective of people is that because you don't take something in your hand, you don't actually physically sort of move it into your possession, okay, that the level the hum human nature doesn't treat land in the same way uh, as, as movable items. Because I'm just standing on top of it, as opposed to like actually moving it into my possession, the level of chazoka of ownership is not as strong. The, chaz not the, chazoka, sorry, the level of chazoka, the assumption that I'm not a gun of, is not as strong. The fact that I take something in my hand, the fact that I can actually lift it up and move it, means there is a greater... The, the chazoka is stronger that you're not a gunner, the fact that you're actually physically holding it because it's metaltalin. Something that you can't physically take hold of, and you can only sort of stand on, right? As opposed to actually move it into your possession, means that the, there is a, the, the strength of the chazoka, the assumption that it's not yours, is weaker. And because it's weaker, you need to prove it. Now, whether that's based on human psychology or not, you know, maybe. But the idea is, is that there's a greater need to prove that it's yours if indeed, um, if indeed you actually have a, uh, it, 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 it can do something you can't physically move into your, into your house. Um, now, what? You're saying that if you walk onto it. If you what? If you walk onto the land. Yes. There's a greater degree of requirement for myself to prove ownership. Yeah, there's, there is less, we, 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 there is a weakening of the assumption. We have, we start with the basic assumption that people are not going off it. People are not thieves, okay? But that assumption is weaker when it's not something you can physically move into your possession and you can just, you're just walking around on it, standing on it. Because people don't have the same perspective in terms of land than they do on physical items, movable items. There, there's an there, you know, you you see it, you you, you see it's more 
uh, it's mine. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to take it unless it actually belongs to me, right? Somehow with land, it's not so quite so clear cut. Two emotions. You said that about digitalization of everything. Why do people pirate copy software? Right, right, right. That's a very interesting comparison. No, but it's a very, yeah, it's a very interesting comparison. There's a, there's a psychological thing here of like, you know, well, I'm not really stealing it. I'm just sort of using it. <laughs> I'm just using it for a period of time. I can always give it back to you at some point. You know, this is, this is just one, 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 one perspective on it. One perspective on it, yeah? Um, why? Because then it's obvious to everybody. Else, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Bad, yes. It? Yeah. And we have to see how this how it develops, right? Exactly. Are we making these assumptions based on fossil or based on No, 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 no. We're just trying to understand the basic idea of why we're going into land in a very different way to metaltonin, right? Now that's to separate those two out, right? Right. Then we have to go into chazoka of karka itself. There are two different types of chazoka. One is a chazoka, which is a demonstration of ownership. We mentioned this in the past. A chazoka, which is a demonstration of ownership, that I own the land, yeah? Karka nikneis, the commissioner says in Kedushin, b'shloshe drachim, you can acquire land in three ways. Kesef, shtar, and chazoka, you pay money for it. You have a document that shows that you own it, proves you own it, or you do a chazoka. What is the chazoka that you do on the land? For example, this is the Gemara at the end of the parak. Rafak be purta. You take your shovel and you dig in the land. That's a chazaka. You take them. That 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 is a that is a demonstration of phys, that is a physical way of owning. For example, let's say someone sold you a piece of land, but you're going to do the you're going to pay money and write the star in three weeks' time. And in the meantime, you're a bit worried. He might change his mind or he might whatever. So you can acquire the land by doing some physical change to it, right? Dig a bit in the land or whatever it is, right? And that that itself is enough to uh, for you to acquire the land. Okay. That is not what we're talking about here, right? That is chazaka as it's applied to a demonstration, to actually physically taking ownership of that. The chazaka we're talking about here is a proof for another type of Kenyan. It is a proof that you have bought it. That's the point, okay? It's a brute or, or been given it as a present or whatever it is, right? Okay? Um, and, and, and that... Um, it's not chazok, which is a kinyan. It's a chazok, it's a chazok, which is a raya, which is a proof, okay? In other words, one second, one second, one second. In other words, a doubt has arisen as to whether or not you own this piece of land. And the chazok that we're talking about, ches kasabatim, is the way in which you prove to us, yeah, that you have, in fact, bought it, or whatever the story is. Like, the story you're giving about this piece of land is true that you actually did get it from your great-great-grandfather, or you actually did, uh, you know, whatever it is, given it as a gift, right? Or you did pay for it last year. Are you with me, right? That's what it is. That's the ches kasabatim. Okay? The inner chazaka comes from? Well, as in? Is it possible? Or is it, is it... Oh, we're going to we'll discuss where we get it from. We, we'll, we'll discuss where this type of chazaka comes from. Okay. Is it possible? Is it shlesh, 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 shlesh? We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. It's a whole part of the first sugya is about how the whole first sugya is where what's the basis for this chazaka? Okay, pardon. But there isn't. That's the point. The reason why there is no chazaka stam because chazaka has multiple different meanings in different contexts. That's why I had to give this introduction because it's confusing. Okay, you've got ches, you, 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 yeah, you've got um, you've got the, the the assumption of ownership which applies to metaltonin, which we said is immediate. Okay, you've got the chazaka which is a demonstration of ownership right as in like digging in the land or whatever and then you've got a chazaka which is a proof that i own it okay a an assumption of ownership this is this is this we're going to develop this in lots and lots of different ways this is this is the whole sugya right but we but we need to understand just that as an as an introduction all right now um the story the story again you'll see why when we go through this how important this this introduction is it's really really important it helps it helps it will help tremendously with the whole sugya okay the story here okay, is that um, a person comes along, okay, and says to Bastin, or makes a claim in Bastin or whatever, he says that piece of land or that house that someone has been living in or squatting in or whatever, right, is not his, and he's a gun of, and he stole it from me. This land was mine, the house is mine. You think the house is his? It's not. So we go to the, what do we do? What do Bastin do? The obvious thing. You knock on the front door, 
the Dayanim, or the Shlucha de Daina, the agent of Beistin, knocks on the front door and says, someone has complained and said that this house is his, it's not yours. Can you, sometimes it's easier conceptually to think of a house rather than a field. We used to fields, but Cheska's Habatim is a house, right? So he knocks on the door and says, can you prove this house is yours? So the guy says, oh, it's such a shame you came now. Because if you had come last year, I had like the star and everything. I had the documents. I had everything to prove that it was mine. But actually last year I was doing a clear out and I thought, listen, I don't know how long I'm supposed to keep paperwork for. It's ridiculous, you know? We want to get rid of paperwork already. So I took it and I shredded all of the documentation I had to prove my ownership of this house. Okay, that's what he says to the Basin. I know you think he's crazy, right? That's what he says to the Basin, right? He says, I shredded any proof, any proof, I shredded any proof of ownership of Basin. So Basin have a problem now. Because how are we gonna how are we gonna tell who owns it? He says it's his, he says it's his. It's not like Shanai Mukh is in Batalis, because that's Mutaltalan, you know, whether you say a chloku and you divide, you can't do that here, because the rules the rules don't apply, right? So he says to Vaisin like this, he says, but I'm going to prove to you that it's mine. How am I going to prove it's mine? Because I have been in this house for three years, right? I've been living in this house for three years and no one said a word. No one objected. No one said a word. And I'm telling you that three years ago, I bought this house from Ruven down the street. I bought the house from Ruven down the street. And in those entire three years, no one said anything. So that proves that it's mine. That is proof that proves that it's mine. And of course, Ruvain says, it's not true. You're lying. How do you mean? And if it was yours, you'd have documentation. It comes along the mission of the halacha and says that if Ruvain was telling the truth, he would have objected. There is no way that he would have let three years pass without coming along to Bastin in the interim at some point and saying, this guy, oh, not even coming to Bastin, just getting in front of Adim making a statement in front of Aiden saying, I'm telling you, this house, this guy is a thief. The fact that he left it for three years shows that in fact, Ruven is the liar. And therefore, Shimon in the house has given us, has a chazaka. He has a proof that of ownership. The chazaka gives him, it's a cheskas raya. It's a proof that he owns the field, the house or whatever, right? That. Critically though, it is not just squatter's rights. People think it's squatter's rights, yeah? Because I'm a squatter, no one, yeah. It's not just that. You can't squat in a house and say, I've been in three years, it's mine. That's not true. You have to have a tiner. You have to have a story. You have to have a claim. You have to have a logical basis for what you're saying. You can't just say, I've been in three years and now it's mine, okay? Right? It has to have a chaz- it has to be a chazaka, sheyesh imo tina. It has to be a chazaka that has a claim. You sold it to me, and, that, and I've been in for three years, therefore it's mine. I, I don't have a star. Of course, because there's a limit to how long we expect people to keep paperwork. What's that limit? Three years. Don't expect people to keep paperwork on three years, according to the mission. Is it? And therefore, that's not a rare. You with me? That is not a. That isn't. There's not a negative factor that 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 affects your your chazok. Okay. The basis that Shimon wouldn't have objected in three years is a what? The basis that Shimon would not have objected to Ruben claiming ownership of the house. Yes. Is that, again, where do we decide that he would have done, he wouldn't have done? Are we working from a principle? Yeah. Or from a so this, uh, this has to be, again, we're seeing the Gemara, right? We're seeing how it works, how it works, right? But obviously we are within the realm here of human psychology, aren't we? We're in the realm of human psychology. How do human beings work? When is it logical to assume that the guy in English law, there's a phrase called the man on the Clapham omnibus, right? Yeah, that, I remember when I did my law degree, that was that is the phrase, right? It sounds ridiculous. The man on the Clapham omnibus is the reasonable man, okay? In, in a legal system, and Lahavdal, it's not the Sifra in the Gemara. I don't know why it's a Clapham omnibus, I have no idea, but that's what the phrase that's used, yeah? <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably, yeah, yeah. But basically, no, Lahavdal, in any legal system, it's the same. You have to go with what reasonable people do. Now, it's true. Some people will keep their documents, every shred of paper for 10 years. Some people might not bother objecting for three years, but actually own a palace down the road and they just don't get around to it because they're completely disorganized. Some people might do all sorts of things. You have to go with what mainstream, normal, reasonable people do. Because if you don't, you have no laws. <laughs> you have no laws. You have no laws. You have no, you have no functioning society. Shmuel, you had a question. Sorry, yeah. Um, why does the person come to base then? Yeah. Um, can, why can he just claim that? Does he not claim for that? Yeah. The, the, person, the person who comes to Basin, how can he claim that it's his? Yeah. 
that's a really good question. That's a really good question. How can the person who comes to base then just say it's mine? That's right. Yes. So he would have um, or seen the Gemara, but um, he is presumably, and again, I say presumably because this is going to play out in a lot of ways in the Gemara, has some proof of original ownership. It's what we call in halacha, cheskas mora kama, which means the chazaka of the original owner, right? He doesn't walk out of thin air, Ruve. You know, he's got, a, you know, he, he's got, he's got documents going back to 1860 showing that his, his great-grandfather bought the land from uh, someone else, and that, you know what I mean? And it's been in the family for generations and everything else, right? But we're saying about this guy saying he sold it to me, yeah? Okay, let's see the Mishnah. Cheskas abatim, the chazaka of, uh, which you've now explained what that is, of houses, the haburos, which is pits, or shikhin, or amoros, these different types of um, basically uh, cisterns or um, uh, underground storehouses or whatever, the, you know, they're all different types of ways of using land, um, that type of thing. The shevachos and davkots, the amerchatzois, bathhouses, or base habadin, olive presses, or base hashlochin. Base hashlochin is um, the fields that are that are basically um, dependent on irrigation. They have to be water, watered by hand. We'll see why that's significant in a minute. But ha'avodim and servants as well. Servants very interesting. Why why are you putting in people in? See anything? Ha'avodim hokshin akakos, what? They're not. Yeah, but that's the point. The point is they're not. Avodim. Avodim is an interesting one because servants really shouldn't fit. Uh, shouldn't fit the principles. Um, shouldn't fit the principles, but. Um, but they're different because the um, instead of just saying it, they're just they're not considered misalted, they're not considered misalted, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, one second, yeah, the point is they're actually look at cards, they're compared to Karka, yeah, but um, yeah, we'll have to see because the Gemara is going to obviously take all this apart and everything in detail. Um, the whole Dova Shoes of Paris told you. And anything which produces peros todin, now that doesn't necessarily mean fruit. If it's land, it means fruit. But it means that it's something, this is the key principle of the, all these things have in common. What do all these things have in common? They're all things where the benefit is constant. There's a constant benefit that is rising from them, as opposed to a list, which we're going to see in the second half of the Mishnah, where you have, for example, seasons, seasonal growth. Now, I, can't, I can't go into my field all the whole time and get fruit. There's seasons to it. This list, they're producing food all the time. When you think of an irrigated field, you've got to think of the uh, lettuces from Gush Katif, as it was, right? You know, there's constant production of vegetables, right? The whole way through, the whole time, yeah? Now, there has these things, cheskos and sholos shonim, miyom liyom. The chazaka of these is a three-year chazaka from day to day. That means if you're in the half of three year, it's not three years in Rosh Hashanah, right? It's three, wherever you are in the year, wherever you are in the year, you're going to come back so that period, three, you know, is your Hanukkah. There's Hanukkah in three years' time. Once you hit Hanukkah, three years' time, it's a chazaka that it is yours, okay? But you own it. Um, now, okay. How can we ensure it's doing it that way? Isn't that one reason why we do it by, let's say, or by, you know, from the locker and this kind of thing? Mm, it's mm, really for mm, so Yes. We have a, point. an identifiable so point, point, yes. Situation yeah. Of yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's really that. No, that's a really good point, and and, and it's true. It's 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 it, it's something here where you have to go far more into the realm of Adim and 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 you know improving that it's actually been three years, hundred percent. But the reality is that logically it makes no sense any other way. If we're saying the logic is after three years you don't keep your documents, whatever, right? So it wouldn't make sense to arbitrarily fi arbitrarily fix that. So some people will be two years in one day, and some people will be three full years. It doesn't make sense, right? So there has to be that if we're basing on logic of how long people keep their documents for, right? It's going to have to be in three, four years. Yeah, let's, um, before we do the second mission, let's see the first Rashi, because Rashi sets out clearly kind of quite a bit of the introduction that I gave you before. Beis a an irrigated field. Because the spring is inside the field, they water it from there the whole time from the spring. It produces fruit the whole time. And anything that produces fruit or you get a benefit from all the time, the chazaka is three years, three full years from day to day, three full years. Meaning, if you have a chazaka in the field for three complete years, you don't need to bring 
Ashtamachira, that's the key point. After being in there, having Chazok for three years, you no longer have to present a star that you that you bought it. And if the original owner comes along and says, this is mine, and this one says, the guy in the field says, you sold it to me, and I lost my star. Okay, that's his response. So again, you see Rashi slipping all the, all the elements in that I explained before, right? He has a claim. He doesn't just say, it's mine, I've been in for three years. He says, no, you sold it to me. That's his claim. You sold it to me, okay? But I lost my star. His chazaka helps him to allow to keep the field. But if not, if it hasn't been three years, his chazaka, his being in the field for three years does not help him. Because when they said three years for Chazaka, what they meant was everything which can possibly be produced from it in three years. It's a three year full production. You have to go through three years of full production in order to establish ownership. Why? Because any less. Yeah, is what? Is not a chazaka, but why not? If I come along after three years, I've been there for three years, I've been there for three years, but I went, I was away for a couple of years. I wasn't in the field for two months in the three years, a couple of months. Okay. Okay. Schmidt will be an interesting question, actually, yes. The point about it being um, constant is because then there's a constant opportunity for oh, the person to raise the judgment. Yeah, 100%, it's that's it. then only when it's in that season. Exactly, right? exactly. Well, we, 100%, that's exactly the point. What we're looking for is normal usage. In order for you to be able to get your claim up to the strength that we need it to be at, to prove ownership, it's a major deal, it's a house. If you're worth millions, right? You've got to be at a level where there was multiple opportunities all the time. You, were, It was a normal use, normal use. If it's not a normal use, then the guy can always say, you know why I didn't object? Because you weren't using it normally. Everyone could see that you were just like sort of pretending you were squatting in a corner of the field. You were growing a few cucumbers while no one saw you. Or interesting case in the Gemara, fascinating case, because a lot of this, the, this, this parak is so, it's so interesting because it's set up as what's called in Halacha, it's Hilchus Toy and Venitza, claim and counterclaim. So we're going to have multiple stories in the Gemara where basically people, you know, you know what the what the case is. You know, someone says this, he says that, he says that. So we have a case in the Gemara where um, the guy says, um, this is my house. I've been there for three years. And the other guy says, what do you mean? I came along and you weren't there. And he says, I was. I, every time you came, I was, I was, I was in, in one of the inner rooms. I just didn't hang around like in the front room. So you never saw me, but I was always in the house. I was just, I just occupied the back rooms. So what's the problem with that claim? Because it's not a normal usage of the house, right? So every time I walk past the front door, I never see anyone going in and out. You don't keep your cars in the drive. So what are you doing? You're squatting in the back rooms where no one can see you. That's not normal ownership. You're doing that because you're a liar. You understand? I mean, um, you know, that, yeah, that's right. Yeah, David. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 100%. That's true. And that is exactly what the Gemara is going to talk about, all those different types of cases. And basically, again, try and work through this principle of normal usage. And how much allowance do we have in terms of normal usage, in terms of the normal way fields are left fallow? So if the guy comes along and says, it's true, you know, uh, I've been here for three years. It just happened to be that my farming uh, advisor has told me that for three years, this field really needed three years fallow. <laughs> so I was never there. Yes. Yes. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. 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 That's exactly. That's exactly right. We are looking at him to have normal use of the asset, which all sounds wonderful and simple and straightforward, but obviously it's not, because you're going to have multiple great areas where someone could argue that it was normal use of the assets, but on the other hand, the other guy could say, but it wasn't normal. There was never an opportunity to object. I didn't know you were there. Every time I came, 
Let's you have a guy, let's say Ruvain travels on business. I'm not going to talk about these cases. Ruvain travels on business. Now, traveling on business in those days, you're away for eight months of the year, okay? So he, so he says, you know what? I was in the field, but the but the, the four months when you came, when you were around, right? That was my, that was when I just, that was when I wasn't, I wasn't concentrating on that particular, particular. I have another house in the town. I was living there. I wasn't living it. You see, there's all these cases, which is what the one I was going to talk about, right? So the Mishnah, this, why he couldn't have Adam Zerman? Well, Adam Zerman is only about Adam, so he's not going to help here with that, right? You could have Adam, and we will have, we will see cases of Adam where Adam come along and say it's not true what you're saying. You're saying you're in the fields, okay? The other guy brings Adam that you were never there. I'm sure I was away, but you never you were never there. That's why I never objected because you never saw you. Then then you could have they're just proving of those Adam. Oh yes. Um, so the Gemara now, let's go back to the mission. Now that's the first case. Now, stay base Abal. If you have a field which is watered by rainwater, it's also three years, but but it's not three full years. It's not three full years. Why? Because the a field that's watered by rainwater is seasonal. So you don't have to necessarily be there all the full three years. You have to be there. It seems the three crop cycles almost, right? Which is over three years, over three years. Rabbi Shmolem, the Gemara explains, and as a machlok is how that would work. Rabbi Shmolem, Rabbi Shmolem says, Gimel Chadoshim Barishona, three months in the first year, Gimel Bachrona, three in the last year, Roshnem Sachadish Baemza, and 12 months in the middle year, the full 12 months in the middle, Hare Elu Yud Ches, it should be Yud, the different gear, so it's either Yud Ches, uh, yeah. No, the gear so that we have is Yud Ches Chodesh. Um, and that, yes, right, that's right, that's right. The Bach changes this to, um, the Bach changes it to, no, the Bach is Yud Ches, sorry, he changes the next bit. He changes the next bit. Um, he changes it, I maybe changes it round. Oh, no, sorry, no, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. He just adds in the word Ha'elu. He just adds in the word Elu. Sorry, my mistake. He just adds in Elu, that's all. Hare, it's not Hare Yud Ches Chodesh, Hare Elu Yud Ches Chodesh. Fine. It's 18 months, yeah. It's 18 months. Um, it is. Pardon? No, then he, then he says that. You no, know, he adds Elu twice. That's what he does. Do you see what I mean? He adds Hare Elu Yud Ches, Hare Elu Yud Dalek. That's what he does, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, anyway, that's Rabbi Shmuel. That's Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Kiva Aymar, you don't even need that long enough. Chodesh Boreshona, one Chodesh in the first month, first year, the Chodesh Bachorina, one month in the last year, Yud Beis Chodesh Bahamsa, 12 months in the middle, Hare Yud Dalat Chodesh. That is 14 months in total. Hare Elu Yud Dalat Chodesh. That's 14 months in total. So there's a machlokas here, exactly uh, how long it needs to be. We'll see Rashi and the Gemara will explain what the machlokas exactly is and why one says one month in the first and last year, one says three months. Okay, the Gemara will talk about that. What's the differentiation? I think it's just uh, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's just maybe it's just better in the language of the Mishnah. I'm not sure whether there's any any difference beyond that. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, now Omer Bishmoel, Omer Bishmoel, Bishmoel now qualifies what he says, and he says, "When did I say When does this apply that you require 18 months? That's only bestay uh, for for 18 months." For a field that is reliant upon rainwater, that's only the stay love on. That is only with a field which has produce growing in it, right? Okay. Um, that's what stay love on is. Love on is, I think that the phrase is stay love on is because it's like the produce is like a white blanket all sort of over the field. I think that's what it is. Either way, it's a pro, it's a means of field that's growing, growing crops, right? Crops. I will be stay ill on. But if it's a field which is being watered by rainwater and is got has got trees in it, then you can discard entirely, entirely um, the three years. And you can look at three different periods in time that three different types of crops are gathered from the field. Obviously, Elon, Connors is to If he brings in the produce, Russia says that's not wine, but Mosak is Zesov. You harvest the olives, that's two, right? And um, Vakonas is Keitso, which means gathering in the figs, basically, okay? Uh, that gives you three years. So now you've got to get your head around a kind of totally different concept altogether, which is sometimes you can have threes that are not even based on time. Not even wow. based on time. 
These are three different crops which are harvested at different times of the year. And in that case, that's enough of an ownership to prove as it, that counts as three years. That's Rabbi Shmuel's view. That's Rabbi Shmuel's view. Okay. I don't want to get too caught up on the second half of the Mishnah because this is one of these Gemaras that by the time we get to explain in the Gemara, Second half of the Mishnah, it will be long way ahead, right? <laughs> so let's, let's just see Rashi on this to make sure you understand it. So Rashi, the second Rashi, stay base habal. I'm Mr. Bekas from Megas Shalom. What is a stay base habal? It is a um, a field which is um, receives um, uh, rain uh, rain water. Eino osaperos, eino osaperos elopam achas bashana. It only produces fruit once a year. So in that case, you've got three years chazak of Eino Tzuchem Miyom Liyom. It doesn't need to be from day to day. It doesn't need to be the full year. And then the Gemara explains, what is the chazak of this field? Rabbi Shmuel says, you need the last three months of the first year. You need the three first three months of the last year, and the full middle year. Now, what's the logic here? See, there are those people who some people hurry to sow the land before Rosh Hashanah. The Kivon Shehechazik Ba Sof Shana Rishona Gimel Chadoshim. Since you have had a Chazoka in it, the end of the first year for the last three months of the year, the Yeshle Edim Shazara Vaosim Gimel Chadoshim. And you've got witnesses, there are Edim that you did sow the land in those three months. You know, he's got to bring witnesses. Not like Adam proved that he was using the land, but he proves that he was using the land because Adam say, we saw you sowing the land during those three months. And similarly, in the three months, the first three months of the last year, that's a chazaka of three complete years. Why? The logic is here in these last two lines of this Rashi, because no one would see his friend, well, he's not such a friend, sowing his field, to eat the fruit that is that is uh, the, the production for that year, that year's crop, for sure, they can be quiet. So Rashi's doing a very clever thing here. The last two lines of Rashi, Rashi's explaining to us why there's an equivalence, you with me, between three complete years, right, and a field which is based on crop cycles, where three crop cycles, three cycles of crop production, one a year, is the same as three complete years. It's the same thing, because no one would ever allow their, someone else to produce the, the year's crop, okay, without objecting uh, unless they, uh, unless they, unless they, unless it was really true that you're in the field. Now, of course, there is a bit of a problem with this rushing. Rashi seems to imply you wouldn't, you wouldn't even allow him to do one year. But they talk about that simple, simple balabatish shot in that is Rashi means times three, right? You know, the, the times three. I mean, you don't use, you don't use three, you, 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 three crop cycles. You would never use. Rashi has to put this thing in about people sow sometimes before a shoshana because it's a weird time to do the, to to sow the field. You're not generally being zorea. Again, I'm also not a farmer, but I don't think you're generally being Zorea a field during uh, like Av, Tamas and Av in the summer. You're not normally doing that, right? You're not normally doing that, right? You're going to sow the field, Rosh Hashanah time, September, October. No, am I wrong? Whatever, even later. You know what I mean? I mean, well, we're gonna, the, the maximum we know about farming basically is like Chaka Kotze. And we like kind of like approximately know there's something called Osif and Kotze. Do you know what I mean? That's the extent of our farming knowledge. But basically, the, 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 they have the whole... Uh, the best place to go actually is the, is the Pesukim in Nerch, no? You know, the seasons, you know what I mean? Where, where Nerch is given the season and there's the seasons for the planting and there will, you know what I mean? And, and, and there's a planting season. But Rashi says, since some people do sow the field early before Shoshana, so that will give you, that means that you're, you're, you're doing the normal crop of that year. It's a normal usage of that crop. And that will therefore give you your three years if you did sow the field then. It's interesting because I know, there's only actually two crops then. What's the benefit of having the whole year? How else would you do it? Because you need a crop of a year. You need a crop per year. You need to do a crop each year. Three years, three years worth of crops for that period. 
No, but you're still going to have to cover that whole year to get to those three crops, aren't you? Because if you're not there, if you haven't covered that whole year, you're not going to get your you're not going to get your three crops. In the first in the first year, it's the final three months, then twelve months, then the first three months of the third year. No, we're saying. No, you need you need in the three year period, you need to have had. You need to have had, um, you need to have had that full year complete in order to count as the normal usage of three years. But Martin's problem is still a problem because you've got, you haven't actually got three crops. You've, let's say you've sown the field at the end of the first year. You've got three months there, right? So you've done that so first Zria. When's the second Zria? Well, sometime in the middle of the next year. And then, and then, and then. Are you saying it's about zero and Pesach, right? Maybe you do get three then, so you will get three. Hmm. I mean, there's still going to be nothing in the middle of you. I mean, assuming you only do it for one year. Yeah, yeah. You only do it for one year. What happens if there's a Schmitter in the middle? Yeah, we mentioned Schmitter. So Schmitter, Schmitter that will have to be talked about when we discuss the whole idea of normal usage of the land. So if it's a Schmitter year, it might be that so itself, you're using it in the land in a normal way. Or maybe you need to have an additional year if it, if it depends on specifically on the crops. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, let me just see if I can see. I have my notes here from Yeshiva. That's what I opened with, which is uh, very nice for me to go back to the, the notes from uh, 20 years ago. So I want to see if the notes have anything on this question. Um, um no, yeah so yeah I don't know, uh, yeah should we be sure you know one second So it could be that it's not three crops, three years crops. But for example, you're, you're doing the sowing, which is a fundamental aspect of that crop. And then you're harvesting it and then you're sowing again. And then you're going to, you know, there's, there's a normal usage which has to stretch over a certain period of time. That would, that, that seems to qualify. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, as I said, the Gomorrah will come to this. So we're going to leave, let's leave that for the moment. Let's finish Rashi on the, make sure keep in mind we'll come back to it. Rabbi Kiva Omer, the first big more of my plague in the world and scream what the Machlokas is, why the three months will be a year, why one month. Rashi says, why, when do you need 18 months for, um, that's um, for a field that is irrigated um, by, sorry, that's, that, that is, that provides, it's not irrigated, that is rainwater, fed by rainwater. Field of produce where all the fruit is gathered at one stage, one time. That's why you need three years. But a field that has got trees growing in it, that its fruit is gathered at different times. Um, grapes at one stage, olives at a different stage, and figs at a different um, at a different stage. That then you don't even need years. You just need to gather those three different types of crops. Connor says to also yain shel gefanim the wine of vines. The mosek has zeisel the Connor says keitzo. Um, you you harvest the olives and the Connor says keitzo. Rashi just brings you a little description of how figs are harvested. Te'enim likate the avshon boy. You pick the figs and you uh, and you dry them out in the field. Also ketzios ketzios. I think they're like kind of like uh, 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 I think they used to make kind of um, wedges or, or cakes of figs. And that's what we used to do. I think, I think it was to do with, I think the, it's like the kites. I might need to dry. It's either the cutting or the drying out, I think. I can't remember. But anyway, that's what you make with the figs. And you bring them into the house. That's chazoka, as if you had three years, same thing. Those three, the usage of those three different crops is enough. That's considered to be, that is three years, um, that is three years usage. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Right. Any questions on the Mishnah? Can we start the good morning? What's that, Martin? Yeah, I think we should also, like I said, the second half of the Mishnah is, is like way further forward. So let's concentrate on the main din. Okay, the main din of Chazaka, which is what we're going to talk about now, the three years. Says the Gemara, 
Shamati me holchi Yerusha. Shamati me holchi Yerusha. He says, I heard from the holchi Yerusha. Um, excuse me, I'm not, it's not a Kishushu, because the next Ahmed is also going to talk about eating different types of crops. We will get to that sooner. We will get to that sooner. But let's start the Gemara first. Amr Bechem, Shamati me holchi Yerusha. I heard from the Holchi Usha. Who are the Holchi Usha? Holchi Usha were the, uh, those who went to Usha, the Sanhedrin, was one of the exiled, more in Roshana. Sanhedrin was exiled 10 different places. And one of those places was Usha. So he says, I heard from those who went to Usha, the Sanhedrin, Shahi Omrim, that they said, Minayan the Chazoka, Shahi Gimel Shonim. How do you know the Chazoka is three years? Mishara Mu'ad. In the Goring Ox, where do you find Chazoka? Mishara Mu'ad. That's three times, not three years. No, no, the concept of Chazaka, you learn from Sharamud. Ma Sharamud, when it comes to Goron, Goring Ox, Kimon Shinogach, Kimon Shinogach, Gimel Nagichos, once it's gored three times, Nothak Le Micheskas Tam, but come Le Micheskas Mu'ad, it's removed from the Chazaka of being a Tam, and it's now assumed to be a Mu'ad, a Goring Ox. Ochinam here as well, Kimon Ochlat Slash Shnin. Since he's eaten the land, he's he's benefited from the land for three years. It has left the domain, the possession of the seller, and it belongs, it exists inside the domain and the rights and the property of the buyer. Yeah, buyer. Okay. Um, any problems with this? <laughs> Seems to show that it's three crops, not three chronological years. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, we'll come to the crops. We'll come to the crops, but um, but what, 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 when it comes to when we talk about Chazaka here with the Shabbos and Nogat festival, is it that the third time, the third time that the Shabbat is, is um, caused, at that point it's classed as Shabbat more? So it's, it's not really, it's not doing, is it an ad for ad for Kalal kind of scenario? Is it, is it, is it, is it three, is it three occasions of time and then it becomes more? Oh, so that's what the Gemara's going to talk about. That, that, that's a problem the Gemara's going to deal with right away now, as in, as in, it's not really comparable necessarily, because with the Shah, you've got to work out, we've got to gore again to be liable. So we'll get to that. Leave that aside. I just want to look, just think about this very simply, the comparison. The comparison here between Chazaka, which is what? What is Chazaka, as we explained in the introduction? It's a pro, it's a proof of ownership. That's what Chazaka is. Is that comparable to the chazaka, right, of Gimel Pa'omim with a tum becoming a mu'ad? No, why not? Well, is, well, let's think about it. Why is the why is the svar? Why is the svar why after three times an ox becomes each time it's good. Yeah, with well, normal behavior, as in it's demonstrating that is that is the normal course of. That's the sign. The sign. The, the, there are three three occasions where it gives the sign that it's a going off. So right. The same way here, you've got three occasions or three three years. It does what? Opportunity. Then you can say say it's, it's a demonstration of that's its its characteristics. So it's normal. Yeah, it's still a bit difficult because you know you're assuming the gills three times. I can assume that this is now a goring ox. If I've been in the field for three years, I can assume it's my land, so effectively. You've done three crops. And therefore? Three crops. It's analogous to a three times. That's, that's it. Yeah, so it's the simple three, in other words. That's, yeah. So there, there, are, there are basically, in the, in the Rishonim, there are two ways to understand. There are two ways to understand the Gemara and the comparison the Gemara makes. The first way of understanding it is how um, do you, the Gemara's question, this is the key point. What is the Gemara's question, right? The Gemara says, Basically, the Gemara is trying to ask, um, what is the Gemara's question? How do you know the Chazok is three years? You can understand it in two ways. You can understand it either. The question is, how do you know Chazok works? Who says? Who says there is such an idea that, 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 that there is the concept of Chazok? Or you can understand the Gemara's question is, how do you know that you need three times for Chazok? There's two different ways of understanding. It's two different things, right? Who says there's an idea of Chazaka, number one? Or how do you know it's three times? We, can, we know there's Chazaka, whatever. How do you know it's three times that makes Chazaka, okay? The um, Rebbe Khanan uh, learns in his, he's obviously you know, on the Achronim, he says that the Shaila is, how do you know that three times is Chazaka? That after three times you have Chazaka, okay? Um, 
but there are others, there, there, there are many Roshonim, the Ram, the Rashba, the Ramban, others that the Shail of the Gomorrah is, how do you know Chazaka works at all? Who says there's an idea of Chazaka? The Gomorrah is not going to Shar Hamud to look for the three. Again, that, that may, maybe that's the simpler way of that, you know? How do you know three times the Chazaka? You know it from Shar Hamud, three, magical three, right? Whatever. <laughs> if the question they could look at it was simpler than that, the stage before then, who says that we use the basis of assumption, right, to approve a change in status? And that, the Gemara says, you can prove from Sharamud. Because in the Torah, the Torah doesn't. The Torah says that after, that after a certain period of time, after you've been through a certain thing, you can establish patterns. As you also said, patterns of behavior. Forget the three. Yes, three is something else, right? The three and three. But the, 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 the more critical question is patterns of behavior are established, and that proves a change in status. That's the point, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so they, 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 anyway, that's, that, 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 that's the two ways of understanding this, understanding the Gemara here. So that's more critical than shut saying that we can do through the swing. How do you know from the two? But it's an assumption. It's an assumption. You have to remember that. Why does the Torah say that an ox, after going three times, becomes a sham word? Because you're going to assume that it's done it three times, so it's going to do it again. That's, the chas- that's what Chazok is. So we're saying. No, but the, no. Once you establish that Chazok works, then I can understand that three works. But the question is, how do you know that Chazoka works? So, so yeah, right, it's, it is a jump, it is a jump. But ultimately, if we're saying, the Torah says that after an ox has done something for three times, you're gonna assume it's gonna do it again, right? And therefore it's changed its status as an animal, right? Here, after Ruvain, no, Shimon, has been in the land for three years, we can assume that he is going to stay in the land. In other words, we are going to view him as owning the land because that's enough. The, 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 there's enough, enough, enough time has passed to assume that, that there's that to, to effectively make it. The change in ownership is secondary to it. It is a jump, but I don't, I don't think it's so strange. I don't know whether anyone else has a view. Is that, is, the, is that really how, how, how it works? How it works with with with, with Shoshanobach. But you're saying because it's done it three times, now it's it now now we expect it's in the future it's going to do it. Now that somebody's been in the fields for three years, we assume he's going to continue to be uh, you know in the field. Isn't it more it, is it not possibly uh, another another way of looking at this? That what you're saying is basically um it, it it's about it it those three actions by the by the shah define it's what type of an ox it is. That's right. Not necessarily it's going to do it again. No, but it's it, not. It's, it's, it's a different type of ox. It's now an ox. You assume that it will act that way again. That's that what Hazok is. If given the chance, we do it. But here you're saying you're, you're saying the three for three years he's been in the field. Not to say he's going to continue to to be in the field. It's it's that it's demonstrating that he's been in the field for three years, each time he's, each year, if you like, he's been in the field, it's a marker to indicate that he would have owned that field, otherwise why was he residing in it without anybody challenging him? So year one, year two, year three, okay, so now we assume that that's, that, that is his, not that necessarily yeah. he's going to be in the future, it, it's that, that's his status. But ultimately, 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 ultimately the key point and the key similarity is the change in status. That's what Chazoka is. Chazoka is an assumption. And it's assumption that a status has changed. After three years, we can assume something. We can assume something, right? And that assumption will inform, will inform the future. It's going to inform the future in terms of the ox is now a boring ox. And it's going to inform the future in terms of the land registry, which we're now going to record as this land belonging to Shimon. And not Ruvain. That's the point. That is the point. That's a simple way of understanding it. 
You know, we're removing it from this Ches Kasmori Kamo into his, in their own original owner, into his. Let's see, how, let's, let's see how the Gemara develops it. The Gemara has a problem. Yeah. A demonstration of Baalus on land. Mm. Different objects of different forms. Yeah, but that's a different type of Chazak. That's what I'm saying. So, so mm. what you're doing is you're changing the you're demonstrating, you're changing the Baalus of the land. By doing what you would do. Mm-hmm. Yes, except that here is not the, yeah, but here, here is just the chazaka of the proof of ownership, not the other one, not the actual act of ownership. That's why it's confusing. Sorry, I know, I did a whole lot. It's three years, in the absence of anything else, who needs to change? Yes, that's right. It proves we haven't done anything. All you're doing is not using the land in all ways, not specifically. It's not the the three years is not the Kenya. That's the key point. There's something else, which is Kazoka on the ta- on land, where you sell me something, and the way I demonstrate my ownership is by digging in the land, but that's something else. It's different Kazoka. Yeah. Confusing. No, 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 it's confusing. So, so, so in which case come back to my original question. So then how do you know that you can establish Bias of the land through Chazaka. Um, through proving that it's yours. The three, the three, yeah. And that, that's what the Gemara is looking for. The Gemara is looking for how do you know that you can prove ownership, that you can prove ownership, right, of land through the process of Chazaka? Yeah. And one says, well, we find the same with the Shamur. Shamur, after three times, you prove it says, yeah. You prove it's changed here as well, you prove it's yours. Yeah. Is there, is there a tree? Again, like I said, there are two ways of understanding it. Either you're proving the three or you're proving the concept, right? The p- concept of chazaka. What is the chazaka? What is the idea of chazaka? And chazaka means assumption. That's what it means here. That's what it means. An assumption. It's an assumption, right? Instead of having assumption, it belongs to Ruvain, it's now assumed it belongs to Shimon. Says the Gemara, that's what happens with a shar. A shar, you assume it's a tam until you get to a certain point where you assume it's a word. We used to assume this land belonged to Ruvain. We're now going to assume it belongs to Shimon. Where are we turning up the idea of From the Torah. That's my question. Yeah, from the Torah. Shor. Shor Hamud. A shor, after three times, you assume it's a word. It is, it is, it is. Wow. Welcome to Cheska Sabatim. <laughs> <laughs> these, these are all specific tenets because when you think about it, what, you, you talked about the concept of land. Yeah. There's, there's a Chazaka of Kenyan and there's a Chazaka of... Yeah, 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 yeah. What's yeah. the Shah doing? Shah is doing a master. There's an action. There's an action. So True, true. You're also doing an action. You, no, because yeah. you would assume once, 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 once a, a proactive um, a, action that yeah. the yeah. has done something. Yeah. When yeah. you take a shovel and you dig it into the ground, you're doing something. Yeah, it's, this is this is the absence of I know uh, but it doesn't it doesn't matter. The point is still the same. It's a concept. The conceptually it's the same idea. That's what the Gemara is trying to do. That's why the Gemara spells it out. You've used it for three years. Right? It's the same idea. Their, their actions are gone, it changes the status. The Gemara asks, Imash Shara Mu'ad, with the Shara Mu'ad, Ad Nagi Chorovi Eslo Mechayev. Shara Mu'ad is totally incomparable because the Shara Mu'ad, the goring ox, until the fourth time you're not Chayev. You've got to gore a fourth time. Hochanavi you here as well. Ad Shara Vi Eslo Chayev Vershusay. Until the fourth year, it shouldn't be in his domain. In his domain. Should be the same thing. Okay? That's what the Gemara says. No, Hochi Ashtar. It's not comparable. Once it's scored three times, it's a goring ox. It's a mood. The fourth time, if it doesn't gore, there's nothing to pay. There's no payment unless it gores the fourth time because he hasn't gored, right? That's why you need the fourth one. Over here, since it has, um, he has used it three years, he doesn't need to do anything more. He owns it. He owns it. So it is comparable to the shor. It's true that for the shor, you have to go a fourth time, but that's only because our interest, Baston's interest, yeah, is in the fourth time. Because if there's no fourth time, the ox has gone to sleep and everyone's happy. There will be no payment of shor 
right, uh, uh, of Nezek Sholem. Whereas here, the status is all we care about. We want to make sure, does he own it? Well, after three years, he owns it. Just two Rashis. Rashi says, let's do the Rashis one second. A few Rashis. Meholchi Usha, she goes to Sanhedrin to Usha. The Sanhedrin went to Usha, exiled to Usha. Can I remember Shoshana? Esagolio is called Sanhedrin. Mechulu, 10 exiles. They went through Miyavna and Usha. Usha, Mechulu, etc. They went in 10 different exiles. Loi mechaev le shalem ala chati nezek. You only chaev to pay half damages. Afkan ad gemar shon revias. Lave chazok here as well. This was the most question. Until the end of the fourth year, it shouldn't be a chazoka. It shouldn't be a chazoka. The Gemara says, no, the, no, it's not true. The Idach, Kloma, top of the next omelet, and a Gichor of Vias to Boinon, the fourth going that we require, Hainam is Shum di Ilo Nogach la Acha Shufzak, if it doesn't go after its changed status, Ma Yeshalem, what is he going to pay? So don't worry, the Gemara says, don't get hung up on the fourth goring. The fourth goring is just because that's the only time we step in and be and are interested in the ox, right? Because then we want to know, oh, he's going a fourth time. Right, you've got to pay the Nezik Shalim. When it comes to the field, three times, three years, you own it. That's it. Ownership. It's all we, we don't need a fourth occasion. You don't need a fourth year or a fourth occasion, right? So that's where the Gomorrah, that's where we're going to leave it today. And the Gomorrah is going to go into uh, and, and sort of discover whether or not it really is comparable because there are many other ways to pick apart the comparison with the Shah, unsurprisingly, perhaps. Okay. All right. Uh, Is there a minute? Yeah.